Welcome back. In the last video, we have arrived at the master equation which governs the dynamics of a quantum system, which is also the generalized Schrodinger equation. The master equation is i partial theta psi equals to tau hat psi. We'll be interested in solving the master equation in the rest of this video, which states some arbitrary measurable quantity tau evolves the system with respect to some parameter theta. The Schrodinger equation is when the measurable quantity is energy and parameter is time. I will also display the momentum and angular momentum analog of the Schrodinger equation on the screen for future reference. Here's a reminder of the three rules that must be kept when we are evolving the quantum state vector. Rule 1 is the quantum state vector always have unit length. Rule 2 is the movement of the state vector must be continuous. Rule 3 is the state vector cannot be stationary. Today we'll solve the equation governing the dynamics of the system. And by solving the equation, I mean to find out what the state is after some amount of time has passed or the system has been displaced by some distance or rotated by some angle. Let's start with the simplest case when we're evolving a definite state tau. Definite state tau means that we're absolutely certain that the state has tau amount of property tau. This is the equation governing its dynamics. The equation states the green dragger is perpendicular to the state because it is the original quantum state multiplied by the imaginary unit i. And our job is to find out the new state after the theta amount of parameter has been passed. I didn't mention this last time, but the dragger technically only tells us the instantaneous change of the state, which means the equation does not tell us how to directly get to the destination but only tells us the next small step to make that makes us a bit closer to the destination. Let's make the steps small, but not negligible. And let's try to evolve the state to the negative original state in six steps and examine the process in detail. The evolved state is simply the vector sum of the green dragger and the original state, which is blue. This changes the length of the state, and it is also non-continuous, which breaks two out of three rules we mentioned at the start of the video. This orange unit circle is there for reference. As you can see, the blue quantum state vector gradually grows out of the circle as it evolves. State initially lies on number one, so let's write down one. And then we want to evolve the state by pi radians in six steps. So each step will only evolve pi by six radians or 30 degrees. We need the imaginary unit because the dragger is always perpendicular to the state vector because there will be a total of six steps and everything inside the bracket is one step. So we need to raise the content of the bracket to the sixth power. Turns out this does not evolve the state onto the negative state we were hoping for because we're not wrapping the draggers around the circle tightly enough. We need to make smaller and more frequent steps. Here's a result of 20 steps. And here is the result of 100 steps. It gets us quite close to the negative original state, but not quite. Seems like if our steps are infinitely small and we take infinitely steps, we'll eventually evolve the state onto the negative state. Here's a clever way to do it. The expression for n steps is 1 plus i pi over n raised to the nth power, then allow n to go to infinity. Let's clean up the bracket a little bit by using substitution of 1 over m equals to i pi over m. Now the expression becomes 1 plus i over m to the power of m i pi. And then we see what happens if we make m larger, which corresponds to us wrapping the dragons more tightly around the unit circle. When m is 10, the pink expression is around 2.594. When m is 100, the result is around 2.705. When m is 10,000, the result is roughly 2.718. When m is a million, the pink expression is still around 2.718. No matter how much more we increase m, the pink expression stops going up at around 2.718. Congratulations! We have just discovered a mathematical constant. We'll call it e and define it as the value of the pink expression as m go to infinity. Substitute our newly defined constant and we get e to the i pi equals to minus 1 or e to the i pi plus 1 equals to 0. This is the famous Euler's identity, 
This is widely regarded as a mathematical beauty because it packs all five important mathematical constants into one expression. And we have discovered this accidentally when we are trying to smoothly evolve our quantum state. Euler's identity is in a sense hiding in the Schrodinger equation all along. Here's the result when we are evolving the state in an arbitrarily large number of very small steps. The result is the negative original state, as expected. The movement of state vector also seems continuous, and the arrow tip does not grow outside the circle. Therefore, the rules at the start are being obeyed again. The constant E came up very naturally when we were trying to wrap the dragons around the circle as smoothly as possible. Therefore, e to the power of something has the geometric interpretation of wrapping something straight onto something that is curved. This is known as the exponential map, and it is the basis of Lie theory. This is also the reason that quantum mechanics is basically linear algebra on steroid. We also chose to evolve pi radians completely arbitrarily and didn't use the value of tau. So the general expression becomes the evolved state is the original state multiplied by e to the minus i theta tau. The negative sign came up because we have defined the positive tau causes clockwise rotation. If you have basic knowledge of calculus, you cannot differentiate this result to check if it satisfies the original differential equation. However, tau is a definite state, something we'll never encounter. The psi state representing our physical system are nearly always in the quantum superposition of these states and lives in much higher dimensions. Let's now examine the geometry more closely and try to solve the master equation. If you imagine the tip of the state vector is dipped in blue ink, and it traces out a path as it moves in the complex plane. The path traced out is a circle. The circle is a collection of all complex numbers with modulus 1. In group theory, the circle is known as a circle group, or a unitary group of degree 1, or simply u1. We now make a copy of the imaginary axis and move it one unit to the right so that it is tangent to the circle. Moving up the imaginary axis by length theta, then wrapping the axis tightly around the circle gets you to the same place as if you just walked on the circle anti-clockwise by angle theta. The circle is Lie group and the tangent line is Lie algebra. Because of this correspondence between the location on the tangent line and the circle, we can carry out the calculation we need to evolve the quantum state in this tangent space then use the exponential map to convert it to the evolved quantum state. It is much easier to work with flat space than curved space, especially in high dimensions. Let's now consider a more concrete example to see how the exponential map works in one dimension for some intuition. To evolve our state, we first stretch the state by tau, which is the amount of the dynamical property, and then we stretch it by theta, which is the amount of parameter we want the quantum state to evolve. Then we just wrap it onto the circle. Where the tip of the dragon ends up on the circle is the tip of the new state vector. That's it. Simple, isn't it? Let's now try to evolve the quantum state that's in a quantum superposition, which is now a physically obtainable state. For example, electron has two possible spin states, spin up and spin down. Spin is a quantum mechanical phenomenon and it has no classical counterpart. We'll talk about spin in another video. But for now, let's not worry too much about what a spin is. Like all operators representing an observable, spin operator has two purposes. The first purpose is to store all the possible values of spin, acting like a database. The second purpose is to generate instantaneous change of the quantum state with respect to the parameter it governs. The mathematical representation of quantum spin is a linear operator. In spin representation, the spin operator is a 2 by 2 diagonal matrix. The diagonal entries on the spectrum are possible values of spin. The dimension of the matrix is the number of possible values, as there are only two possible values of spin of an electron, namely plus half a h bar and minus half a h bar. The matrix works in 2D space by acting on 2D vectors. States of certainty are unit vectors in its own basis analogous to i-hat and j-hat in 2D Cartesian coordinates. Thus, the diagonal matrix can be seen as two basis vectors stretched by their own values. The spin operator can therefore be regarded as a two stretched states of certainty packed into one mathematical object. As the way we're arranging these vectors in the matrix is completely arbitrary, the operators representing physical observables 
can be seen as a set of labeled quantum states of certainty. The label is the length of the state. Thus, the effect of operator on one of its bases is very simple. It just stretches the state by its labeled value. Thus, the extraction of the dynamical property of a definite state from that observable can be described with an eigenvalue equation in linear algebra. The eigenvalue is the amount of that dynamical property and the eigenvector is the quantum state of certainty. When a quantum state is in a quantum superposition, it always gets knocked off its span when the operator acts on the state. So here's what it looks like in 2D space. Using our example of the spin states of electron, the horizontal axis is now the spin-up axis. The basis vector is the state of spin-up. The vertical axis is the spin-down axis. The basis vector is a definite state of spin-down. The spin operator is now a matrix. The quantum state is a unit vector that must live in 2D space because quantum mechanics doesn't allow the third spin state of electron to exist. So here's the effect of the spin operator on quantum state psi. We have set h bar to 1 for simplicity. The result of this linear transformation produces the dragger. We now stretch the dragger by theta, which is the amount of parameter we want the system to pass. I have set theta to 3 in this example. This could mean we are evolving the system by 3 seconds, shifting it by 3 meters, or even rotating it by 3 radians about some axis. Sadly, Animator Bohas has given up on animating this, so here's an analogy with a grapefruit. So imagine the tip of this four-dimensional state vector traces out a four-dimensional surface, which is the surface of this grapefruit. I know the grapefruit is actually a three-dimensional object, but just pretend it's actually four dimensions. And then we place the tangent space uh, tangent to the curved space so that the tip of the quantum state vector touches both the surface of the grapefruit and the tangent space. Then we make a copy of the quantum state vector, then place it into the tangent space. Then we let the quantum mechanical operator to act on this quantum state. And after we've done all the linear algebra we need to find out the new state, we use the exponential map to wrap this tangent space onto the curved space. So now the tip of the quantum state in the tangent space lies on the curved space and becomes the tip of the new evolved quantum state. And this is how we evolve the uh, quantum state vector in high dimensions. The blue circle on this diagram can be seen as a cross-section of the grapefruit. The yellow line is the cross-section of the paper. And that is how we solve the master equation, which includes the Schrodinger equation. The quantum state after passing theta amount of parameter is e to the minus i theta tau hat operating on the original quantum state. e to the minus i theta tau hat is a unitary operator of degree n, un, where n is the number of definite states of the observable. We're representing the observable tau hat as an n by n diagonal matrix. Let n equal to 3 for the sake of simplicity. We can then calculate e to the power of this matrix. For a diagonal matrix, this is a simple task because the result is just a matrix of e to the power of the diagonal elements. Every diagonal entry is now a unit complex number. But we said this is just u1 in the circle group. And then un can be regarded as a collection of u1 operators. un is powerful because it is able to evolve any generic quantum state psi, because it has all these u1s working for it. These complex numbers are the quantum mechanical equivalent of Smurfs. Each one of them has been assigned to a simple task to evolve a definite state. We're talking about two, three hundred boxes of sinus pills. There ain't that many Smurfs in the world. Jesse Pinkman. The quantum mechanical equivalence of this quote of Jesse Pinkman becomes, there are two, three hundreds of definite states in quantum superposition. However, I have enough unitary operators of degree one to evolve them all. Unitary operator of degree n. The role of these unitary operators have a simple physical interpretation. 
For example, e to the minus IAP hat is the translation operator. It physically translates our system by distance a. e to the minus I alpha L hat is the rotation operator. It physically rotates our system by angle alpha. e to the minus ITH hat is the time evolution operator. It evolves our system forward in time, allowing this to act on an initial state, solves the Schrodinger equation. So here's the final solution of the master equation and the specific solutions. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we'll talk about the quantum harmonic oscillator.